everyone welcome or welcome back to my channel today's video is really exciting i'm gonna show you my full process for this painting but also i'm gonna be introducing some really exciting brushes these are my watercolor brushes from my collaboration with craft tamo and for this also i'm gonna be painting this amazing photo of lily harvind some of you guys may recognize her i've done one painting of her before and that one turned out to be one of my favorite watercolor pieces so if you guys want to see more of her amazing photos i will be linking her instagram and her youtube channel up in the description and also if you guys are interested in seeing some real-time walkthroughs of my videos they are up in my patreon and again the link to that will be in the description as well for this painting, this took a lot of planning for me to do and the very first thing that I did for it was applying my masking fluid. Basically this lets me preserve some of the color of the paper even when I paint over it. So if you guys haven't tried it, this honestly feels a lot like glue except it doesn't damage the paper and it's easy to lift. It's a great tool for watercolors and I find myself using it a lot to get these interesting effects with my paintings but as I'm applying that I'm gonna talk a little bit about my brushes if you guys don't know about Craft Tamo they are an art company that is most well known for their cruelty free brushes and for a while now I've been working with them on designing what I would think would be the perfect set of brushes and particularly for the kind of work I do which are mostly watercolor and gouache portraits so finally got around to making these six gorgeous watercolor brushes and for this video I will only be using four of them but I will be showing the other two for my later videos too. So the very first one that I'm using right now is my one inch flat brush and most of the other brushes in my set are designed around my favorite brushes so the kinds of brushes that I already use. This one is something that I've always wanted but I've never really had so I use these flat brushes a lot for laying down the undertones of my paintings and especially with watercolors I like to do that for my very first part of the process. I'm using it now to saturate my paper with this very vibrant colors that I'm initially laying down. They are essentially what I want my highlights to look like. So for this I really needed something very broad and soaks up a lot of water. So this first one is always a must have for me and that's why this is the very first brush that I designed too. It's just very nice and convenient to have. Most of my other brushes I think are just a tiny bit too narrow. This one is a little bit bigger but it's also just broad enough to maneuver around portraits if I want to just saturate my backgrounds. So for that I couldn't use the very broad ones. So this one is just the perfect size I think for the kind of work that I do. So after that initial layer, now what I'm doing is adding the first basis of structure in the painting. So while that first layer with the flat brush was just us painting the overall glow of the piece and the colors of the highlights really, these next ones is when we're starting to paint out the actual structure of the elements in the photo. So for this we are using my second brush and that is the number 8 round brush. 
I also have a number 10 softer tip round brush, but just because of the size of the painting, I only had to use number 8 for this. So this is the brush that really surprised me the most in this set. While I was impressed with all of these brushes, I was most blown away by this one. For me, it's always hard to get watercolor round brushes right, and that's because at least for the kind of work that I do, they are the brushes that I use the most. So I'm most particular about how my round brushes feel. And so I was really surprised by this one because when I first wet it with the water just to take out the initial coating in the hair of the brushes to protect them, I was really scared that it was gonna feel just like my silver black velvet brushes. Just by hand feel, I felt like they were so soft and I was scared that they were gonna be very hard to control just like my silver black velvet one and that one was my most expensive brush and turned out to be one of the brushes that I use the least because it's hard for me to get precise lines with it. And I was really scared that I was gonna feel the same about this brush. But as soon as I tried it with the actual painting, I just let out a really big sigh of relief because it held its shape so much better than my other softer brushes. It also soaks up a lot of water, surprisingly. It feels a lot softer than my Aqua Elite brush from Princeton, but it holds its shape very similarly to that one. And again, it soaks up a lot of water, which is great for the starting layers. But what impressed me the most was how softly it laid on my paper. I could paint with the slightest flick of my wrist on the paper for this and it still get very precise lines which which I really need a lot for my portrait paintings and so it was really awesome to work with this one brush in particular. I actually liked this brush so much that I used it for so much longer than I intended. I liked it so much that I used it for the first pass of this very complicated web of shadows on her pillow, which, which I think is a complicated part of the piece. So I intended on doing this part with a smaller round brush, but because I found myself liking this number 8 one so much, I actually started using it for some of these shadows as well. I don't know if you guys are aware of how small this painting is for the amount of detail that's on it. So that's why for my paintings when I go further down the piece, I would not be using a number 8 size brush so much. But it's a testament to how much of a joy it was to paint with this brush and also how easy it was to control that I ended up using it for a lot more than I intended. So. For that reason, I actually didn't end up using many of these brushes in my set just for this painting because it is a smaller one. I expected to use at least three of my watercolor brushes, but I ended up using number, number eight specifically because even when it came to my later layers, I still found myself using this, especially for the sharp shadows that I've put in with very light washes. This thing was amazing for that. And I even used it for painting in some very sharp and small details in her hair, which I already expected to switch to my number four brush by then, but I ended up just enjoying this one so much for it. I added in another layer of masking fluid and this time for just for the hair strands mostly so I will have some more colorful highlights as well as the ones that I used for the first one which is essentially just the whites of the paper. So once that second layer of masking fluid is done, I am now switching to my number 4 round brush. This one is just as good as the number 8 one but it's just a tiny bit smaller but because I'm using it on the later stages of the painting and especially for the hair, I was able to play around with it much more. And this brush was so impressive for the hair, and which is actually really impressive because if you look at the hair in the photo, it's a mix of very soft shadows and lighting that's hitting the hair and also some very stark fine hair strands. So you can see how much this brush really showed its versatility for that. The fine hair strands I think was so easy to paint because of 
the very fine tip that it has and also it was also very pliant when you put just the tiniest amount of pressure on it so that the rest of the brush body is on the paper and you can see how beautifully it does that for the softer shadows too. This was one of my favorite parts to paint throughout the whole process just because of the brush but also because of how amazing this part of the photo is and it's really satisfying to finally see it be flashed out as a painting. So what I'm doing right now with the grass in the background is just some very light negative painting. It's only a couple of layers but I wanted this part of the photo to stand out from the rest of the painting and frame the white pillow very nicely. So even for that I really enjoyed using this brush when usually I would use a stiffer brush for my negative paintings just because it really requires a lot more precise shapes. There's not a lot of room to hide when you're doing negative painting, so again, I was really impressed by how I could do that with this brush. So for the very last brush that I used for this painting, I'm very proud to introduce my favorite brush of the whole set. This one is the number two round detail brush. I was particular about this brush because I always find myself using it for the final details in my portraits. and. I always say that it's the most important part of the paintings for me because really pulls the paintings together and for a long time I've been looking for a brush that I could use for this ever since I started painting I would think but the closest I came to it was my Princeton Kulinski brush and that one Strathmore sent to me for free I don't think I would be buying that myself just because of how expensive it is but also I just wanted that one to be a little bit longer so it's easier for me to pull lines on it and I've always found some of the rigger brushes to be just a little bit harder for me to control. I think it's just because I don't use them that much but I absolutely love this one. I just needed it for the details like the floral print on her pillow and also for some of the finishing details of my portraits. This brush is my favorite in the whole set and Again, it's so nice to see a brush that I've always dreamed about for so long and to finally see it flushed out and to get to use it into the real thing. It's like, it was almost like a dream come true. So aside from those brushes, I have a smaller flat brush which I designed to be used for gouache. I think that one is the only one I designed specifically for gouache and especially for my painting over my sketches series, which is something that I do a lot and something that I enjoy doing. So I knew I had to have a smaller flat brush in this set, but this detail round brush and the bigger flat brush, I intended those for both watercolor and gouache. So I can't wait to show you guys that other brush for my favorite series soon as well. I think the most complicated part of the process was just adding this final web of shadows on top of what I think could already be a finished painting. So for this it looks kind of easy and it did go by in just one pass but actually there are a lot of different consistencies in the paint for this. I just made sure that the thinner paint is in some of the lighter parts of the shadows and then made sure that the colors are pooling on the darker parts of the shadow as well. So it was really cool to finally see the painting, finally start to mimic the amazing photo that Lily took and to finally see this 
painting that I've been wanting to do for a while finally come together and get done. You can also see it more after the masking fluid comes off and and the detail brush comes in again to finally finish the piece. It's just an exciting moment to see and especially with these brushes that I've been waiting on for so long. But yeah, that is it for this one. Again, all of the links that I mentioned are in the description. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you to my patrons for supporting me and I will be seeing you guys again soon.